If one were to mention the incredible feats of engineering undertaken by our now lost ancient ancestors, in particular, gigantic walls, some may lean towards the impressive, sheer enormity of the megalithic stones within the wall of Gornaya Shoria. Or more commonly, the Great Wall of China is the more popular choice, or the more obscure, lesser-known Great Wall of India. Undoubtedly, the Great Wall of China was a feat of monstrous proportions. Having been built to such a scale, it's visible from space. Yet what many more are unaware of is an ancient kingdom once located in southwestern Nigeria. Known as the Walls of Benin, they dwarf the Walls of China, a series of defensively constructed earthworks called Aya in Edo. They consist of 9.3 miles of intercity walls and an estimated 9,900 miles of outer wall. The walls of Benin City were described as, quote, the world's largest earthwork carried out prior to the mechanical era, end quote, by the Guinness Book of Records. The Benin City walls have been known of by Westerners since around the 1500s. Portuguese explorer Duarte Pacheco Pereira briefly described the walls during his travels. Another description was given around 1600 by the Dutch explorer Dirk Ryders. Ryders' account of the walls is as follows, quote, At the gate where I entered on horseback, I saw very high, very thick walls of earth with a very deep broad ditch around. They were dry and full of high trees. Who built these walls? Or indeed, how did they accomplish such a mind-boggling feat? Traditional accounts suggested that assuming a 10-hour workday with a labor force of some 5,000 men, it could have been completed within just 97 days. However, these estimates have been criticized over the years in many ways, one in particular being a lack of account for the time it would have taken to extract earth from ever-deepening holes. Yet, regardless of these discrepancies in opinion, regarding the challenge in its creation, or indeed their age or origin, we find these walls highly compelling. There are many enigmatic, unexplained ancient mysteries which we have covered here on our channel. Many mysterious ruins which are slowly revealing their secrets to us. However, what must be the most intriguing of the historical subcategories has to be the O-parts out-of-place artifacts that have been found all over Earth. These mystifying items are the only subject within the field which can shed their own very unique lights upon the distant past and sometimes hard-to-believe possibilities attached to their ages. The island of Samos within Greece is home to a number of these particular artifacts. 1.5 kilometers off the coast of Turkey, this small island has a big history. Within the island's capital museum is a wide range of very impressive artifacts. The most interesting among the collection is undoubtedly the strange bronze artifact which according to academia, merely depicts a strange form of unknown carriage that would have once been pulled by horses. However, some also believe that the strange animals are actually depicting a form of periscope and that the entire artifact is actually that of an ancient submarine. Additionally, there also exists another amazing artifact that we felt was worth a mention, found within private collection. Originally a religious idol, what do you think this wooden artifact is depicting? Could it actually be that of modern day paragliders, somehow sent back in time, seen and depicted by this once ancient people as a religious vision? It's an incredible, if rather imaginative thought but it is testament to such artifacts intriguing nature. There are many incredible out-of-place artifacts that can be found all over Earth. Each one just waiting to spark our interests. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Hey guys, so recently first ranked captain Vladimir Prokhodko, the chairman of Russian Public Research Organization for Underwater Studies has publicly spoken in regards to Russia the US and China spending billions in space, when maybe they should be spending the money deep in the sea, under the glistening polar ice caps where he claims gigantic alien machines are hidden. And he's not the only one. 
Since World War II, whistleblowers from governmental bodies all over the world have been lifting the lid in regards to the fact that alien crafts are being tracked, traveling from the top of the planet to the bottom, within our oceans and above. During the naval operation known as Deep Freeze, men aboard a Russian icebreaker would later testify to witnessing a craft surge through 10-foot thick ice, flinging huge chunks in all directions, a silver vessel then shooting off into the atmosphere. Dr. Rubens Disviela, a famous Arctic explorer, was among those who testified to witnessing the terrifying event. Upon exiting the ice-cold waters, he stated that steam erupted from the body of the craft, indicating the huge amount of energy these mysterious USOs possess. In 1997, Prikodko said, Billingsgausen Depression, near the Antarctic area, was examined by the Australian Army at a depth of over 6 kilometers, where cameras recorded strange oval objects which emitted an intense interior light. The film was reviewed by experts from the Royal Institute of Oceanology. Their conclusions were that the structures were of artificial origin. Russian naval vessels also report often tracking submerged dishes traveling in excess of 150 knots or 280 miles per hour underwater. Former USSR Captain Vladimir Azaza, head of the navigational section of the Oceanographic Commission, said when questioned that about 50% of encounters with UFOs are connected with the oceans and 15% are connected with lakes, making a huge portion of close encounters in the form of unidentified submerged objects rather than flying. What these mysterious events are caused by, or indeed what the mysterious craft are beneath the ice cap, remains a closely guarded secret, with only handfuls of whistleblowers ever coming forward. Yet they all stress the same thing, that we are not alone on this planet. There are many things found throughout history which cast doubt onto the modern chronological paradigm in regards to the ages of man. We have often wondered how many of these proofs have been unearthed over the years, only to disappear again into the ether without even a mention? With a caption from one of the many source books of the notorious William R. Corliss, shedding some light onto the numbers of these proofs, found and discarded over the years, specifically drawn out deep from within the minds of Earth. Quote, Dr. Perez Snell of Sonora, had in his collection a human jaw, which was brought out in a carload of pay dirt from a shaft stretching far beneath the Table Mountain, and with it were several stone implements. The specimen was given to him by a miner. It is only fair to state that there could not well have been found a miner in all that region who would have thought it worth his while to attempt a deception, nor even one who had any doubt in his mind as to the point we are considering. For they saw the products of man's work come out with the gravel too often to pay commonly any attention to them. The only wonder he even took the trouble to pick out the bone at all. There can be no question that for one such that has been preserved, dozens and perhaps hundreds have gone down in the current of water in the sluice. The bones in question had come from a depth of 180 feet below prehistoric lava flows. Colonel Hubbs, state superintendent of instruction, had in his possession in 1857 portions of a human skull himself, which itself came from an impossibly old mine." End quote. It would seem the presence of these artifacts be predictably rife yet ignored due to already established paradigms of history. The Calaveras skull, also known as the Pliocene skull, being one such artifact. A human skull found by miners in Calaveras County, California, dated to as early as the Pliocene, thus it supports the idea that humans, mastodons, and mammoths coexisted but also push the timeline of man back an unacceptably long way, that in regards to modern paradigms, predictably, the remains, due to miners' lack of collecting them, has been heavily argued as a fake. On February 25, 1866, miners found the human skull in a mine, again beneath a layer of prehistoric and easily dated lava flow at a depth of 130 feet. 
the skull made it into the hands of Josiah Whitney, then the state geologist of California, as well as a professor of geology at Harvard University. A year before the skull came to his attention, Whitney had also published the belief that humans, mastodons, and mammoths coexisted. Thus, he became an instant advocate for its popularization. The skull served as proof of his convictions. After careful study, he officially announced its discovery at a meeting of the California Academy of Sciences on July 16, 1866, declaring it evidence of the existence of Pliocene Age Man in North America, which would easily make it the oldest known record of humans on the continent. We find the skull, and indeed William Corliss's research, incredibly compelling. During our research, we have stumbled across countless legends and accounts from history which tell of ancient giants. Not only legends, but photographic evidence, and an equal amount of initial newspaper reports of their discovery. This often accompanied with the mention of the Smithsonian Institute's insatiable interest in such finds, and then an inevitable erasure of said finds from future research. Rarely has an ancient giant been allegedly found, with the remains seemingly slipping the net of said institute's attention, making it into mainstream research and an ally's collection before the Smithsonian was able to make said discovery vanish from history. Captua being one of these particular finds, which not only matches the initial claims, but has remained in mainstream historical research. Tales of a two-headed, 11-foot-tall giant are not only corroborated by photographic evidence, but the actual mummified corpse of the giant himself. The initial discovery of this incredible being was made back in 1673, an ogre or two-headed giant is said to have assaulted a party of Spanish sailors, who fortunately overcame said giant with cunning. After trapping the giant, the sailors planned on killing it, fearing repercussions if released. The cause of the giant's death, however, has long been debated, but what cannot be denied is the astonishing remains which eventually made their way to London. The mummy then vanishes from the history books for nearly 400 years, reappearing in 1914 on the shores of the Burnbeck Harbor in the UK. The mummy inevitably became an extremely popular attraction, with people traveling from thousands of miles away to come and peer at this once monstrous two-headed giant. It remained in the public eye until 1959, a rare exhibit which escaped the clutches of those who would wish to hide it with many photographs and other research projects allowed to be undertaken on the giant's remains by Lord Howard. This incredible giant, thanks to the Lord's dedication to said curiosity, remains in existence within the public's domain. An undeniable verification of a lost race of giants, which we have long claimed to have had first-hand experience of in their past discovery. A magnificent three-meter-tall mummified corpse of an ancient giant does indeed exist, and due to its age and primitive technologies available to said claimed sailors, when initially discovered, the possibility of it being an elaborate stitched-together hoax has been seemingly debunked, but also ignored by mainstream media due to the controversial nature of said finds. Who was Captua? Was he part of a race of beings in Patagonia, a race we have merely seen these remains of? Is the corpse authentic? If not, how is he constructed to such an astonishing detail so far back in history? Cap is undoubtedly highly compelling.